you know, go. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, welcome everyone. Happy New Year. As, as we will start our um, January 2022 our Silicon Valley Clean Energy Authority board meeting. Uh, and I would like to call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. I hope everyone had wonderful holidays, a little bit of hopefully, or a lot of rest. <laughs> and we're off to a great start for 2022. Um, I'd like to go ahead and read our continuing this year three of our COVID uh, <laughs> um, announcement. So this meeting will be conducted in accordance with California Government Code Section 54953E in consideration of coronavirus COVID-19. All members of the Silicon Valley Clean Energy Board of Directors and staff will participate in this meeting by teleconference. Members of the public may observe this meeting electronically by accessing the meeting via the instructions on the agenda and public comments sent in advance of the meeting to board clerk Andrea Pisano will be read within the public comment period or the applicable agenda item. The public will also have an opportunity to provide comments during the meeting. Members of the public using Zoom may comment during public comment or the applicable agenda item by using the raise hand feature and you will be recognized by the chair. Those using the telephone audio only feature should press star nine on your phones to initiate the raise hand function in Zoom. You will then be announced, unmuted, and your time to speak will begin. The public may provide comments on any matter, list not, any matter listed on the agenda. Speakers are customarily limited to three minutes each. However, the board chair may increase or decrease the time allotted to each speaker based on the number of speakers, the length of the agenda, and the complexity of the subject matter. Speaking time will not be decreased to less than one minute. And with that, could I get a roll call, please? Yes, thank you. Chair Abekoga? Here. Vice Chair Gibbons? Here. Director Woolley? Here. Milton? Here. Flieger? Here. Tyson? Here. Any? Here. What? Oh, here. Sorry. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> Milahi? Present. Walia? Here. Mine? Here. Lee? Present. Thank you. And I believe that Martinez Baltran is currently absent. Great. And Thank you. Thank you very much. And I just want to welcome our new member, uh, Mayor Larry Klein from Sunnyvale, who uh, elevates from the alternate spot to uh, the member spot. And um, welcome Otto Lee, Supervisor Otto Lee, um, as the alternate from Santa Clara County. Good to see you all. You got two from Sunnyvale. <laughs> That's right. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Don't try to dominate. <laughs> We'll go to uh, the next item, which is public comments on matters not listed on the agenda. The public may provide comments on any matter not listed on the agenda, provided that it is within the subject matter jurisdiction of S SVCE. Speakers are customarily limited to three minutes each. However, the board chair may increase or decrease the time allotted to each speaker based on the number of speakers, the length of the agenda, and the complexity of the subject matter. Speaking time will not be decreased to less than one minute. Are there any members of the public wishing to speak on a non-agendized item? If so, please raise your hand in the uh, Zoom box. Uh, and I do see one hand. So we will start with uh, Arnold. If you can please unmute yourself and begin speaking when you're ready. Uh, yes, so um, I, I tried to send an email about the, uh, uh, this, I think. I haven't seen anything from Sickle and Vanity Clean Energy specifically on the current proposed uh, NEM3 uh, things that's going through the CPUC. And I'm a little, I guess, disappointed that I haven't seen uh, a clearer, strong uh, position from uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy. So anyway, I guess that's, that's the comment. I think uh, as proposed, it's currently, well, no, nah, that, that's, it, uh, it's basically, not well thought out and i'm kind of amazed that it's 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 this far it's gotten this far and so um i suppose there's a uh a teeny chance i'm wrong but i'm pretty confident i'm not <laughs> and i would expect something from uh, silicon valley clean energy that's it great thank you very much uh any other members of the public wishing to comment 
I don't see any other hands. Did we receive any public comment, written comment, um, board clerk? No, no written comment received. All right, thank you. Um, would um, our CEO, would, would you be able to comment on the NEM3 issue at this time? Sure, uh, I can comment on it. The NEM3 issue, Chayabikoga, is something that has been discussed for many years by a variety of stakeholders. Um, Unfortunately, there's no easy answer, but we do think that the proposed decision is directionally correct because it rectifies certain inequities in the previous decision. And like any difficult decision, there are impacts, both positive and negative, short-term and long-term. We are concerned about the speed at which the implementation is being proposed. However, uh, in the big picture, when you think about this most of the changes that are happening on the T and D side and those benefits. Um, and that's through the IOUs and the CPUC. Uh, there's one aspect of NEM, which has to do with uh, excess solar uh, compensation. And on that SVC does provide uh, twice as much compensation as pg &E and two and a half times compensation to lower income customers. So uh, that's where we are right now. It is a contentious issue, uh, but uh, we have not waited in the center of this, uh, but we do think it's directionally correct, uh, but the speed at which it's uh, being implemented obviously will have some issues, but it has been discussed for many years at the PUC. Thank you. Great, thank you. And I'd like to um, also note that um, member Martinez Beltran has joined us. Welcome, happy new year to you. Um, so we will now go on to the next item. And for that, I will um, turn it over to our vice chair, Liz Gibbons. Thank you, um, Madam Chair uh, Abe Koga. At this time, on behalf of the board, I'd like to make a motion, which will be the adoption of a resolution commending Margaret Abbey Koga for her dedicated service as chair of the board of directors of Silicon Valley Clean Energy in 2021. And uh, I won't read the entire resolution, but a few points are um, appropriate. So whereas chair Abbey Koga serves as the Silicon Valley Clean Energy chair, board chair in 2019 and 2021, being the only director to serve as board chair for two terms. And whereas Chair Abikoga supported Silicon Valley Clean Energy throughout the coronavirus pandemic by encouraging flexible meetings and work arrangements for the board of directors and staff. And whereas Chair Abikoga helped lead the formation of the California Community Power with 10 CCAs to cost-effectively procure clean energy and advance solutions to a carbon-free grid. Whereas Ka Chair Abikoga supported forming the California Community Choice Financing Authority with four CCAs, issuing California's first ever municipal non-recourse clean energy project renewable bonds valued at over $2 billion for a 30-year term and for S, uh, Silicon Valley Clean Energy, reducing our renewable power costs by $1.9 million annually. And whereas Chair Abi Koga, Koga guided Silicon Valley Clean Energy in avoiding 575 million pounds of GHG in 2021, something near and dear to your heart, I know, reduction of GHG. Whereas Chair Abikoga committed to 1.6 billion in long-term renewable energy contracts, totaling more than 700 megawatts of capacity and nearly 175 megawatts of battery storage. And whereas Chair Abikoga helped customers save $77 million on their bills since our launch. And whereas Chair Abikoga helped invest $28 million in local decarbonization programs. Now, therefore, 
the Board of Directors of the Silicon Valley Clean Energy hereby commends Chair Abikoga and expresses its sincere appreciation for her dedicated service as chair and a member of the Board of Directors of this authority. So Chair Abikoga, um, we thank you um, so much for the commitment this last year has been. Each in our own councils know that taking this on in this particular time has been absolutely um, daunting and you, and you stood up to it all extremely well, so thank you. And with that, I will offer um, board members an opportunity to speak and then we will go to public comment followed by uh, a roll call vote. And I see a uh, hand raised by uh, Director Walia. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Chair Margaret Abikoga, thank you very much for your leadership in so many words. I'll be brief, Vice uh, Chair has enumerated in so many ways. I'm still learning. Above all, I want to thank you for helping make it easier for me as a new board member in the last year. Uh, big thanks to you. With that, I second the motion by Vice Chair uh, Gibbons. Thank you. And Director Flagor, and then followed by Director Tyson. And uh... thank you, um, Chair Abikoga. I just want to say congratulations and thank you for your leadership this past year and also the year before. Um, you were the perfect person to lead us through um, last year with all our challenges, your demeanor, your leadership style, just your welcoming um, presence on our virtual meetings really made the difference. Um, and I want to echo what we heard also from several people, just your patience and how you allowed everybody to share their thoughts, ask their questions, and ensure that everybody felt heard. So thank you for your leadership and I'm happy to see, well, I hope you'll continue to serve on the board because I look forward to continue working with you. Thank you, Director Tyson. Well, I've got to say note to self, don't ever follow Nisa again because <laughs> she's so good at expressing all of the, the right things. And, and, and Margaret, I just have to say, you, you take a complicated subject and one with a lot of issues going on and a lot of impact and you you do it with grace with the plum and you make us feel welcome and understanding and uh, for that i thank you and uh, and do indeed also hope that you continue to stay involved with us thank you and director uh, martinez beltran jordan sweet i just want to tell you thank you um honestly you've been who's been a mentor to me. And I really do admire, as uh, Director Tyson said, the grace that you bring. And, um, you know, and constantly reminding us that this is our charge. And this is what we are facing now and today. And so I appreciate you keeping that front and center for us in the midst of so many other competing priorities. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, Director Klein. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair. I, and Margaret, you know, I just want to commend you for for how you've run this meeting. And I know the last year was not easy for any any elected to a large degree. But but, you know, being a member of the public watching this meeting, you know, it was run very, very well. And, and exactly your your demeanor as well as uh, your knowledge and able to basically work with staff, work with other other directors to break down these issues. And, and I think, you know, that that really was an accomplishment as well as, as just something to aspire to as, as I undertake, you know, what is a very complex subject, you know, moving from the cheap seats of being watching in the public, watching as a member of the public to being on the board. So I appreciate, you know, what you've done and what you've done for this organization. So thank you. Thank you. And Director Elahi. Thank you. Uh, so short version is I incorporate by reference everything that every, anybody has said before for Margaret. Margaret has been a great leader. And I especially incorporate what uh, Mayor Walia has said, Director Walia has said. 
uh, because she's the newest member on the board. And I know when I was new and Margaret was a chair, uh, made, made you feel really comfortable. I mean, I could ask anything and most of the stuff I was asking was dumb, but she made, made, made you feel like you, you know, you belong on the board and uh, I've learned a lot from her. The other thing I really do want to emphasize is the role that she's played in making sure that everything that we do as a board encourages our staff to be the best staff that they can be. And, uh, and our staff has done well. And I think, I don't know that whether there was in the whereas in the motion or not, but I would like to add that in that the role that she's played in encouraging our you know Silicon Valley staff to do their best. And thank you very much, Margaret. Appreciate that. Thank you, Director Willie. Yeah, Margaret. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, climate change. It's it's going to have really significant effects. And so that makes our job here all the more important. And with your leadership getting us through uh, more power contracts and um, making more of an impact, your, your leadership and time efforts, greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Thank you. And, and Director Chua. Thank you, Vice Chair. I just want to do what everybody said, and, and you know, it's I can I'm new too. This is my first. This is my I'm going on my second year, and it's just so nice to feel the warmth, the friendliness, and I can even feel the commitment, the passion that you have for the environment. So that inspired me to to be more knowledgeable and. And just overall, you, you conduct yourself at the dais, like uh, it, it looks so smooth, but I know it's not that easy, but you make it look so good. Thank you so much. And I'm sure you're still gonna be around, right? Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Director Lee. Yes, thank you. Uh, as this being my uh, official first meeting for the sport, uh, I just want to uh, say first, it's an honor to be serving along with all, all of you. Uh, and certainly uh, I've been admiring the work of uh, uh, Chair uh, Abekoga for many, many years. Uh, SVC is certainly a, a great organization and under leadership, the uh, comments that's being made earlier really reflects that. And uh, so one thing I would just say is Margaret, don't you leave, okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And uh, Director, oh yes, um, CEO Balachandra. Thank you so much. So Margaret, thank you so much for your service. Uh, of course, I agree with everything everyone else said, but I just add, you really bring your passion to this job, uh, right from the background that your father had and how, what kind of work he was doing and what you brought to the Mountain View City Council, the leadership in, you know, you showed in the Sustainability Commission there and the sustainability efforts and how you brought that to uh, SVCE, to the passion that you're, you've shared that you're, and the worries and passion that your daughters have about the future of the planet and how you brought that into your, your work here. Uh, so I think that passion really translates to all our employees because this is really a very mission-driven organization and the employees care about the work they do. So it's uh, really great to see that coming from the chair. Uh, so really appreciate that. And I can't leave without saying that when we had our reach code competition, you were very silent, but you were number one. <laughs> you showed us all the way. So thank you for that. So thank you. And seeing no further comments from the board of staff, I will open um, the um, discussion to the public. And I have one raised hand from Mr. Carney. Good evening, board members. Um, I'm Bruce Carney. I'm the chair. And free mountain. And I, I wanted to recognize Margaret and perhaps to share a detail that not all of the current board members are aware of. So the, the genesis of SVCE really 
dates back about eight years and two grassroots groups, Carbon Free Mountain View and Sunnyvale Cool, were the activist organizations that really pushed hard to make um, carbon free electricity a possibility. And I would have to say that at, at the beginning, Sunnyvale was taking the leading role. They realized that carbon free electricity was the, the biggest card they could lay on the table. Uh, but Sunnyvale by itself probably wouldn't have been able to create an agency to do what SVCE has done. And so those of us in Carbon Free Mountain View went to the Mountain View City Council and um, our request was a little bit late in the fiscal year planning process. I believe we talked to Margaret in either February or March of 2014. And what we asked for was about $30,000 that could be combined with money from Sunnyvale to do a, a feasibility study to set up the agency. And Margaret shepherded our request through the process. And as best I remember it, uh, just sort of, you know, squeezed it into the budget um, nearly at the last minute. And so with money from Mountain View and Sunnyvale and possibly Los Altos and this county were involved by that point, but it, it really felt like a two city operation in the early days. Um, the feasibility study was funded, it was completed, and a year later, uh, Margaret helped secure uh, the technical funding, the funding for the technical study that followed that ultimately led to the creation of SVCE. And so, um, you know, it's well known that success has a thousand fathers, but perhaps only one mother. And in this case, that would be Margaret. So thank you very much, Margaret. And to those of you from other cities who are serving on city councils, if one of your community members comes to you with a request for a little bit of seed money for an idea that uh, might make a big difference in terms of uh, carbon reduction or carbon sequestration, I hope you will help them get it into the budget so we can uh, continue to press forward. Thank you very much, Margaret, and uh, members of the board. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Carney. And I do not see any other raised hands. I will close the public um, hearing portion of uh, the meeting and bring it back for um, the board to um, have final comments or questions. Um, and then we have a motion by myself, a second by um, Director Martinez. No, who, who gave it? Was it Martinez Beltran? No, Walia. Walia. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Seconded by Director Walia. And the motion is that the Silicon Valley Clean Energy Board hereby commends Chair Margaret Abikoga and expresses its sincere appreciation for her dedicated service as chair and as a member of the Board of Directors of the Authority. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will call uh, the roll call, please. Call the vote. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chair Gibbons. Aye. Director Willie. Aye. Hilton? Aye. Flagger? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Rennie? Wholehearted yes. Thank you. Chua? Aye. Elahi? Yes. Martinez Beltran? Yes. Walia? Aye. Klein? Yes. Lee? Absolutely yes. Thank you. And Chair Abekoga? <laughs> Aye. Thank you. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. And I think um, at the end of the meeting, if uh, Chair Abikobo wanted to say a few words, I think we could find the time uh, to do that. So thank you. And I will now return the meeting back to your uh, chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. And um, if I could just say just a few words now, um, I just really want to express my heartfelt thanks to all of you, my colleagues on this board, our amazing staff, um, our members of the public who I consider are 
um, 13th and 14th and so on um, directors. Um, as Bruce, uh, Mr. Carney mentioned, uh, I appreciate him um, sharing the, the, the genesis of, of, of our uh, now what we call SVCE. Um, and it was really, um, you know, the, the public that came to us in Mountain View and Sunnyvale to, to um, urge us to do this. And, um, you know, I, I um, it's an honor to be have been on this board um, and to serve as chair once, let alone twice. Um, I looked at the second time around as my opportunity to maybe um, do better and, and uh, lessons learned to, to be a better uh, chair. And, um, you know, for me, this is, um, I, I, you know, I'm not a technical expert. I'll, absolutely admit it. And so I really appreciate staff, their willingness and their patience, and also just their amazing ability to break it down and, and make it real for, for people like me or the, you know, real people. And um, for me, this has really been as of late, um, as um, CEO mentioned, um, what I look at is um, trying to preserve the future for my daughters and the, our children. Um, we talk about uh, climate change every single day here at home during dinner. Um, my girls are, you know, they, I mean, they are, some of it is fear that they may not have a future. And that's what's really um, hit home for me. And so it's just been an honor and um, a privilege and, and you know, just that I, I really look at this as a great opportunity for us to be able to do our part in, in hoping, uh, hopefully being able to preserve that future, bright future for the next generations. But um, thank you so much for, um, again, for your collegiality. Um, this is one of my favorite boards. I just really appreciate the energy and the, the camaraderie um, and the enthusiasm for what we do. Um, and again, to staff, I, I think you're the best staff <laughs> that we could have ever had. And I'm just so grateful. So um, thank you very much. And yes, I am not leaving. <laughs> I have at least one more year. So um, you can't get rid of me yet. Um, <laughs> but I do really uh, and will uh, look forward to continuing our good work together and, and taking SVCE to the next level. Well, thank you very much. And thank you all for your, your kind words. <laughs> um, I guess we'll move on to the next item, uh, which is our consent calendar. And um, this, this uh, calendar will be, uh, action will be taken with one vote. Um, are there any members of the board who would like to um, pull any items on the consent calendar or speak to any items? If so, please raise your hand. I don't see any, so I will open this up to the public. Are there any members of the public wishing to comment on any of our consent items? Please raise your hand or hit star nine if you're on the phone. I don't see any board clerk. Do we have any public comment that came in earlier? No public comment received. Great, thank you. Um, then I will close public comment, bring it back to the board. Um, if there are any other comments, or if not, I would be happy to entertain a motion in a second. I move consent calendar. Thank second. you, Vice Chair. And second with um, Director Martinez Beltran. Any other discussion? And if not, could we get a roll call vote, please? Thank you. Chair Abikoga. Aye. Vice Chair Gibbons. Aye. Willie. Aye. Hilton. Aye. Flieger? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Rennie? Aye. Chua? Aye. Thank you. Elahi? Aye. Martinez Beltran? Aye. Walia? Aye. Klein? Aye. Lee? Aye. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. We'll now move on to our regular calendar items. And item two is our CEO report. CEO report and our presenter, presenter is our CEO, um, Mr. Balachandran. Thank you, Chair Abikoga. I have several updates. Uh, first, I'd like to tell you a couple of uh, new employees. I'd like to introduce uh, 
an employee today, a uh, newest employee who joined on Monday. Uh, and that's Peter Mustasich. I think he's right here. He's our energy services lead uh, in Don Bray's organization. He reports to Zoe Elizabeth and he comes to us with an illustrious background. He's a mechanical engineer uh, and a Renaissance man. He's also a jazz musician, uh, but I'll leave it to him to introduce himself to you. Uh, Peter. Hey, thanks, Girish. Very nice to meet all of you. I'm really excited to, to be here to get started. Um, as you mentioned, I, I'm a mechanical engineer. I started in kind of traditional HVAC design of hospitals, uh, mostly, and kind of having a sustainability passion, I, I quickly transitioned into things like um, lead project management and building energy modeling and greenhouse gas inventories. Uh, from there, I got really interested in existing buildings, so I got involved in um, retro commissioning and, and energy audits. Um, I spent some time at a third party energy supply company, which is where I first became familiar with CCAs. And I got really, that kind of planted the seed of, of a future ambition of hoping to, to uh, join one. Uh, at, at that particular company, I helped build their energy services division. And I got exposed to a lot of different uh, customers, things like PCIA, direct access. I got, I got to see a lot more than just hospitals. I got to work with restaurants and hotels and multifamily buildings and large commercial and industrial. Uh, most recently, I, I was with a company called 2050 Partners, who's a consultant to the California IOUs. Uh, so I was uh, managing several projects, including uh, res residential battery, uh, battery ener energy storage systems as well as uh, small portable batteries for medical devices um, in, in partnership with the CEC. And then I was also the lead um, kind of point person for light duty EV um, ad advocacy efforts for statewide Cal Green uh, code updates. Uh, when I'm not working, as Yirish mentioned, I, I play saxophone, so it's been a big part of my life um, currently. A, Proud member of a band that has nowhere to play because of COVID. <laughs> um, and I enjoy swimming. I have I have two young daughters, so they occupy a lot of a lot of my energy. Uh, and and as he also mentioned I I spent some time at the seven years with with my wife. Uh, we opened a, a small kind of boutique uh, wine and spirits shop in Oakland, very close to the the Grand Lake movie theater. If you're familiar with the Lake Merritt area of Oakland. Uh, we, had a, we had a great seven years. We uh, decided it was time to leave, which may have been related to having kids. And so we, we sold um, in January, right before the pandemic. So we were very lucky to maybe exit, exit when we did. But again, I'm really excited to be here and it's, it's great to meet all of you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, and I'll just make an announcement uh, so we're very happy to have Peter here. I look forward to his work, especially with the uh, doubling down and decarbonization and the work that we'll be doing with our commercial customers and with our cities and reach codes. Uh, talking about that and working with cities, uh, we also had posted a position for manager of public sector services and having that position focus on uh, assisting cities uh, move forward on decarbonization efforts. And we've hired, offered a job to Tony Yulo, and he accepted the job, and he'll be starting with us in the middle of February. So uh, thank you, City of Morgan Hill and Yvonne, and uh, Very thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team effort. I think I heard you say that. Uh, so uh, we, we'll welcome Tony uh, formally to this meeting. He'll be on the other side of the table. Uh, obviously, Tony has contributed quite a bit uh, through being an alternate board member and also being on the Risk Oversight Committee for many years and on the MOG. So, okay, so that's my employee update. I do have a couple of other updates. With the rise of Omicron, we are obviously, you approved us doing remote meetings. We were planning on having a face to face meeting this Friday, an all hands meeting uh, retreat for the employees. Uh, at Hakoni Gardens, we've postponed that to April. We're gonna do that virtually. So, uh, you know, there's hope on the horizon, uh, but for the next two or three months, uh, we continue to work 
uh, 100% remote, and we'll be putting in places, uh, you know, safety protocols mirroring what we have uh, Santa Clara County, which all of you are quite familiar with. A uh, couple of updates on power plants. Uh, first long-term contract has come online January 1, 2022, and that's the COSO geothermal project, and that's our existing geothermal. Uh, that's about 10% of our load will now be served by direct green energy being scheduled to our load. The next project should be coming online very shortly in the next couple of days. It's the Slate project, which is solar and storage. It'll serve about 7% of our needs. And so again, this, these are projects and contracts that you signed uh, several years ago and they're coming online uh, now. So very happy and proud about that. Uh, talking about power projects, um, we did update the executive committee on a project coming to the board through California Community Power. And this has to do with the long duration storage project. This would be the first one through CC Power. And that will be coming to the board in February. The CC Power board will be considering this project for approval in uh, next Wednesday, January 19th. And it's a project, it's an eight hour long duration storage project. Uh, the developer is Ellis Power and the project's name is Tumbleweed. And we have seven uh, CCAs participating in this project. pg e rates, we had updated the executive committee, the finance committee and the board that we were going to bring, uh, pg e was going to be uh, raising their rates and we were going to follow uh, with having our 1% discount. And just before we were going to bring it to the board in December, uh, that got delayed. The PUC uh, delayed that and it's going to be delayed through, it'll start only on March 1. So at the February meeting, we will be bringing that to you. Uh, and we don't plan to take it to any of the committees because it's essentially the same uh, structure as what we've discussed before. So I wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, so that is essentially what I have for the CEO report. I'll be happy to take any questions, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Balachandran. Do we have any questions from directors? I don't see any hands. So uh, let me open this up to the public. Are there any members of the public wishing to comment on the CEO's report? So please raise your hand or press star nine. And I don't see any hands. Did we receive any public comment earlier, board clerk? On this uh, no public comment received. Great, thank you. Um, I just want to welcome Peter uh, to welcome aboard uh, to our uh, family, our organization. It's great to know that we have a musician in the house. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be back to doing some events and maybe we could call upon your, your talents <laughs> at some point, um, but welcome aboard. I look forward to working with you and um, we'll look forward to uh, welcoming Tony. Uh, he's a familiar face, um, but uh, onto our staff, that's really wonderful that we'll be able to continue to have him work uh, with us. So thank you very much, um, Girish. And with that, we'll close this item and go on to item three, the election of the chair and vice chair for 2022. And I will hand this over to our board clerk, Andrea Pisano. Thank you. And thank you, members of the board. Uh, last month, Girish presented the timeline and the process for the appointment of our 2020 board chair and vice chair. And as a result of our call for the letters of interest for these roles, we did receive two, um, one for each. So for the role of chair, we received a letter of interest from Director Liz Gibbons. And for the role of vice chair, we received a note from Director George Tyson. And there were no other additional formal um, interests received. And that concludes my report. We received two, one for each of these roles. Great, thank you. So um, let's see, what, I, what I'll go ahead and do is, um, let me take public comment first. Um, if there are any members of the public wishing to comment on either the election of the chair or vice chair, um, please raise your hand or press star nine. 
and I don't see any, so I will close public comment, bring it back to the board. Um, I was going, first I wanted to see if there are any nominations for the floor, from the floor for the chair position. We'll take that election first. And I don't see any hands. Um, I will ask the vice chair uh, if you'd like to say a few words on your nomination. Thanks, Chair Gibbons. Thank you, Chair Avikoga. Uh, you are well, well known in our discussions earlier this evening, um, expressed the, the responsibilities and excitements of being chair of Silicon Valley uh, Clean Energy. And I am really um, excited and enthusiastic to uh, offer uh, my time and commitment to the board and the staff uh, to be chair in 2022. And um, so much has been accomplished by the staff and the various boards since the inception in 2016. Uh, the founding members of which I was one of the first board members um, got off to a rousing start of education um, and it continues. We spent many weekend days learning and learning and, and learning about this incredible uh, field of, of energy and how we can as an organization address climate change and decarbonization. And I had to uh, think about where we started and the glossary that's in our packet I mean, the glossary is now four pages. There was an effort at one time to do a one page laminated glossary. <laughs> so we've come a long, long way um, since then. And I just wanna reinforce that um, I support the board's actions to develop and double down on the programs to further the successful strategies to decarbonize the built environment such as the REACH codes 2.0 um, in, in the area of mobility, including e, EV charging infrastructure with equity. I think that's a word that um, has developed a great deal of deep meaning to our organization. Um, and um, I, I, I'm just so pleased that we've all taken that to heart, thanks to wonderful research provided by the staff. And also the ability um, to afford and provide reliable power supply, utilizing CC power to facilitate the economics of long duration storage. These are key strategies that co are coalesced to meet the state's mandate for 100% clean power by 2025. But all the while, Silicon Valley Clean Energy has exceeded the greenhouse gas reductions below the 2021 goal at a cost savings to our constituents. The team of Silicon Valley board and staff manages an innovative and financially solvent business, no small accomplishment. Um, so for six years, I've been act an active member on the board and committees, including The Rock, with the board's concurrence, I look forward to bringing the knowledge, experience and excitement uh, to the organization in the role of 2022 Silicon Valley Clean Energy Chair. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Gibbons. Um, with that, I would be happy to take a motion and a second for the uh, nomination of Vice Chair Gibbons as chair for 2022. And I see, let's see, I see Director Alahi. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I think uh, Vice Chair Gibbons is going to have some big shoes to fill, but she has all the talent and the qualification. And I'm sure uh, uh, Chair Evikoga is going to continue to guide her and us as she goes along. So I would move for her appointment as chair. Thank you. And is there a second, uh, uh, Director Walia? Uh, thank you, Chair Avikoga. I agree with what Javid just said. Just, uh, I would like to second the motion and uh, Vice Chair Given brings a wealth of experience. And I think for this year, it is just the perfect timing when we are working on reach codes to have somebody with her uh, architecture background, mm -hmm. just the perfect timing. So I'm more than thrilled to second that motion. 
Thank you. Uh, any other comments? I would just like to add, um, I'm whole heart, will be wholeheartedly supporting this motion. It's been a real, it's just been an honor and pleasure to, to work with uh, Vice Chair Gibbons this past year. Um, we worked for much longer on the board, but to work closely with her, I've been, definitely have been able to see that um, experience and enthusiasm and um, just her real uh, genuine passion for, for, the, the, for the, our mission and um, just how much she really puts into to the, to the um, organization. And um, yeah, I, I just can't think of a better person to, to take on the chair role. So um, looking forward to her leadership this year. And with that, I will uh, close comment and can we get a roll call vote, please? Yes, thank you. Chair Abbe Koga. Aye. Willie. Aye. Hilton. Aye. Liger? Yes. Tyson? Yes. Rennie? Wholehearted yes. Shiva? Aye. Ilahi? Yes. Martinez Patran? Absolutely. Walia? Aye. Klein? Aye. Lee? Aye. And Vice Chair Gibbons? Aye. Thank you so much. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you all very much. Congratulations. <laughs> and with that, I don't actually have a gavel, but I will pretend <laughs> that there's a virtual gavel and I will hand it over to our new chair, Gibbons, to continue with the meeting. Thank you uh, so much. At this time, uh, we would uh, go to the position of vice chair. And as our board clerk has indicated, we have one nomination, and that is from Director Tyson. And I would open the uh, meeting from the floor for any additional applications, nominations for vice chair. Seeing none, we'll close the nominations. You have several hands raised. Yes, I know. Oh, okay. Thanks. thanks. Um, and um, bring it back to um, the board for questions. And then we will, I, do we need to go to public hearing, uh, public comment? No, we don't, okay. No. I'll, I'll go back to the board. And um, we have Director Flygor. Thank you, Chair Gibbons. And let me also congratulate you. I am very excited to work with you in this new role. And as many others have said already, um, it is the right time for you to take on this leadership role. You're more than ready. Um, and so it's very exciting for the organization. And thank you for stepping up. Um, I raise my hand because I would love to nominate um, Mayor Tyson to the vice chair position. So if you're not ready for that nomination, I can wait. No, no, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I nominate um, Mayor Tyson to be vice chair of SVCE. Thank you. And Director Rene? I will, I, I will second the motion and, and also say that you are an excellent choice for chair as you've shown all your passion as one of the only remaining founding board members and have been fully engaged the entire time. So. You're an excellent choice for chair and director Tyson actually has been here almost from the beginning as as an alternate and then as a director. Um, so I know he was paying attention also as an alternate and is a very quick study. Um, you know, the role really takes some technical understanding and he has, you know, quickly come up to speed um, on his time as a full director. So I'm very confident um, that he will do an excellent job as vice chair and then hopefully moving into chair. And this year he will practice as mayor. And so next year he'll be able to lead us with no problem. So I'm wholeheartedly second the motion. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yes, Director Walia. Uh, if I could, I'd like to third the motion. Uh, <laughs> I have in my first year, I have learned from each and every director here. And let me first congratulate you, uh, Chair Gibbons. And I also believe that Amir Tyson is, based on my one year you observed, I learned so much from the comments uh, you have made at every meeting for every item in a very, very calm demeanor. And I see the technical uh, expertise come through. 
I also see the policy and uh, there are comments you have made that have helped me better understand as well as feel more comfortable in uh, what I'm supporting here. So I'm thrilled that uh, you are going to be our next vice chair once the, it seems once the vote is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there other comments from other directors? I would just add mine that I would be um, delighted to share in the responsibilities of um, chair with Vice Chair Tyson. I think we all know that this is a group effort and I've uh, had the great pleasure of having a really strong, wonderful relationship with Chair Abhi Koga. And I would look to having that same with um, Director Tyson. So if there are no other comments, may we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, Director, Director Tyson. Yes, you may. I feel like I should say something, although I, I feel very, very humbled by this. And I do want to say thank you and congratulations to Chair Gibbons. I, I have great confidence in your ability to lead us in this organization. And despite what the Director Rennie said, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm somewhat of a newcomer. I wasn't part of the initial uh, group here, but I, I feel like uh, I've, I've learned so much from from those that have come before, and it's, it's helped me quite a bit. Just for the rest of you, in terms of my background, it's, it's kind of funny. My, I'm a chemical engineer by training, and my master's thesis, for years I joked it was so 1979. It was a solar energy storage project. Uh, and since then, I've worked on fuel cell as well as um, advanced batteries. And then I teach at UC Berkeley, and I teach my students about sustainability, about carbon capture, about energy efficiency. And so I, I'm glad that you see it. the technical skills. I feel like I do have those. And, and I think just as important is understanding the business and understanding your organization. I'm eager to learn from all of you and uh, am very eager to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Director Tyson. And may we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, thank you. Chair Gibbons. Aye. Willie? Aye. Hilton? Aye. Liger? Yes. Rennie? Aye. Hua? Aye. Ilahi? Aye. Martinez Beltran? Aye. Abe Koga? Aye. Walia? Aye. Klein? Aye. Lee? Aye. And Tyson? Yes. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you and congratulations, Vice Chair Tyson. Thank, Thank you. you. We will um, now move on to item number four on the agenda. This is the appointment of directors to the 2022 Silicon Valley Clean Energy Executive Committee. This is an action item and we will have a presentation from uh, board clerk, Andrea Pisano. Thank you, Chair Gibbons. So as a reminder, the executive committee of our board is a five member body, which provides advice to the CEO and the board itself on policy, operational and organizational matters. Um, so just as a refresher for that, uh, similar to our chair and vice chair uh, interests, we ask that anybody inform us if they would like to join this group. And as you may have noticed in our staff report, we did have six people initially um, put their name in. Um, since then, we did have one with Withdrawal um, from Director Margaret Abe Koga. Um, so, with that withdrawal, we do have five members interested in this group. And I can share a quick screenshot of who those directors are. So, you'll see we have Director Javed Ilahi, Nisa Flieger, Liz Gibbons, Yvonne Martinez Beltran, and George Tyson have all formally expressed interest in joining this group. And with that, that concludes the staff presentation. I can answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, of staff? Are there any nominations from the floor? Seeing none, we will uh, take this opportunity to bring the discussion um, for further comment or a motion to approve the uh, executive committee with the five members as one vote. Director um, Chair, I'd be happy to make a motion, but would you like to take public comment first? 
Am I supposed to take public comment on this one? Yes, then we will take public comment first. Thank you so much. And we will now open it to the public and I will look and see. And I see no hands raised. Is there anything from the public or prior to the meeting? Uh, no, no public comment received for this item. Thank you very much. And then I will return to Director Abikoga for a motion. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to also mention that um, I withdrew my name, not because I didn't want to do the job, but um, I, I was originally not sure if we we're going to have um, five, and so that that was why I put my name in. But I'm ex I'm really excited that there were um, there was enough interest, and um, having done it uh, many years, <laughs> I think it's time for someone else to take the spot. So that that's why I've withdrawn my name. But with that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the executive committee uh, members as listed. Thank you. A second. And we have a motion by Director Abikoga and a second by Director Chua. And may we have a roll call vote, please. Yes, thank you. Chair Gibbons. Aye. Vice Chair Tyson. Aye. Yes. <laughs> Willie. Aye. Hilton. Aye. Flagger. Yes. Rennie. Aye. Chua. Aye. Ilahi. Aye. Martinez Beltran. Yes. Abe Koga. Aye. Walia. Aye. Klein. Aye. Lee. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you. And congratulations to the executive board members. Uh, we look forward to, to working together with staff. So thank you very much for those commitments. And we now move to item number five on the agenda. This is um, also a, a motion for action. Approve the policy platform and identify focus areas for the 2022 legislative and regulatory ad hoc committee. The committee is not appointed at this time. It is the purpose of this discussion to talk about the focus areas. And we have a presentation um, by, um, Mel. Hi, everybody. I have a few slides to walk through. So, Happy New Year. And Happy this, New Year. <laughs> thank you. Um, the objectives of, the, of this meeting we have three requests. So, the first one is to approve the 2022 policy platform, uh, approve the creation of an ad hoc committee of the board to address legislative and regulatory responses to industry transition, which we call the Ledge Reg Ad Hoc Committee, or I will call the Ad Hoc Committee to keep things brief. And then finally, approval of the focus areas for the Ad Hoc Committee. And we're gonna take uh, these in turn. So next slide, we will start with the policy platform. So the purpose of the policy platform is threefold. So it's to articulate and identify our legislative and regulatory priorities for the 2022 legislative session. And even though the policy platform has a strong legislative focus, it is um, very closely intertwined with our regulatory priorities, which is why we include them both in the policy platform. Um, it is also to allow staff to take positions on bills for SVCE without explicit board approval. And it's also to guide optimal use of uh, SVCE advocacy time and resources. And there's three high level policy areas underneath. There's um, a subset of key uh, policy priorities, which I'll walk through in a minute, but the high level policy areas include uh, customer welfare and the CCA model. So that's very much focused on protecting our customers, keeping rates affordable, um, and ensuring that the CCA model is and our authority and autonomy is protected. There is climate mitigation and clean energy technologies. And at a high level, it's taking advantage of any opportunities um, that allow for um, climate mitigation and the deployment, uh, the, high, uh, the high deployment of clean energy technologies, which is core to our mission. And then finally, the last area is more future focused and it is the energy regulatory and market structures. And this is again, focused on sort of the dynamic 
and evolving uh, market right now and environment we're in and making sure we're well positioned to respond to the changes there. And before I move on to the uh, sub areas, I do wanna note that we did not take anything away um, in terms of our priorities from 2021, but we did add a few. And I think this is a testament to what an active year 2021 was in terms of just so many changes, so many new requirements, new procurement mandates. And so we thought it was important to not only continue to um, prioritize the, the issues that have been uh, legacy issues that have been around for a couple of years, but also take advantage and prioritize issues that have come up in the past year. Next slide. So customer welfare and the CCA model. So the first one is procurement autonomy. Uh, it's, about, uh, it's about making sure that we preserve uh, procurement autonomy. So we are taking positions on bills to ensure that our procurement autonomy is protected. The second one is the right to sell, uh, set retail generation rates, which again is about our authority for rate setting. Um, there's cost shifts and customer indifference. And again, protecting our customers in terms of making sure that rates are affordable and any cost shifts um, allow for equity between CCA and IOU customers. This is where PCIA would fall. There's non-bypassable charges which um, is about making sure that there are no new um, unreasonable charges imposed on CCA customers. There's affordability and equity, which is focused on our most vulnerable customers. So it's making sure that our rates are affordable and equitable for our vulnerable customers. And then there's CCA operating authority, which uh, speaks specifically to the board and making sure that your authority as a board is protected. And what's changed um, is the operating authority because we have seen a lot of um, policy changes in the policy consideration in terms of additional regulation of CCAs. So we wanna make sure that that continues to be protected. Moving on to the next slide. Then there's climate mitigation and clean energy technologies. And uh, we added a new um, area here, which we call funding. And it's funding to support climate mitigation and clean energy more broadly. We've seen funding come through at both the federal and now at the state level with the governor's new budget to support clean energy technologies. And we want to make this a priority. And we have started to make this a priority in terms of tracking this funding, looking for opportunities and then politically strategizing. And so making sure that we are supporting any bills that um, for those goals. There's grid resilience, which continues to be an issue with wildfires and extreme weather events. There's the ability to invest in grid edge resources, which basically, again, is the idea of supporting clean energy technologies and new technologies out there that can support our decarbonization goals. And similar to that, there's fuel switching and electrification, which has been core to the work that we do. That remains a priority, especially as we're doubling down on decarb this year. Next slide. And then the last one is the future focus based on uh, the requirements and market structure. So we continue to prioritize the creation and development towards an open access distribution platform. And what that means is making sure that we have access to data, we have access to a distribution system to ensure as CCAs, we can continue to um, deploy and invest in grid ed edge technologies and clean energy. Um, there are CCAs as providers as last, uh, last resort and sole providers. And again, this is again, making sure that we preserve the option that CCAs serve as providers of last resort in the case um, that uh, they're an LSC, uh, sorry, I, I lost my train of thought, but serve as providers of last resort. And then there is um, restructuring of investor-owned utilities. This has been an issue that has been discussed for a number of years in terms of PG&E bankruptcy and looking at restructuring of the energy market. And so this remains um, an issue for us. We want to track it. We want to continue to respond to it as issues arise. And then there's residual, residual central procurement where it improves systems function. And so um, for this one, it's, it's a little opaque the way it's described, but what it means basically 
is that we maintain our procurement authority. We we are the primary um, we are the primary LSE and that primary entity to choose when we self procure. And if there's any central procurement is on a residual level versus something that takes away any procurement authority that we have. And then finally, there's grid reliability. And this is one that we added. And it's related again to the procurement and uh, the reliability mandates that have come out last year. We wanna make sure that any new um, mandates in terms of procurement and reliability, while we very much support overall grid reliability, the rules are ones that we can follow and make sure that we can continue to cost effectively procure for our customers. And this is very important to us. This is something we're working on very hard on the regulatory level. If it comes up on the legislative level, we want to respond to it as well. And I'm gonna stop there. I said a lot and I wanna see if there are any questions. Uh, thank you. Um, Militia Charles, the director, your full title. So I give you um, your respect here is to do <laughs> regulatory and legislative policy. That was a very helpful presentation. I particularly appreciate uh, the clarification of what changed. It, it made it um, easy to follow. So thank you. Uh, with that, do we have any questions? And I am looking to see the whole screen here. I don't see any questions. Okay. And um, um, Melissa, uh, Mel, do you have any uh, additional uh, slides? Or are you all set? No, no. I I do have additional. Actually, yes, yes. I do have additional slides. I just wanted to stop here in terms of the policy platform. We're going to move okay. on to the ad hoc committee. So I have all one right. more one more. Uh, slide. So I'm just going to say we do have a comment from the public which I can take now, if that's acceptable to everyone. So I'll open the public meeting to have uh, a comment from the public, and that is uh, Bruce Carney. Hi, Bruce. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak again. Um, as those of you who've been on the board for a while know, I've been uh, an advocate for CCEs for many years, and I, I spend a reasonable amount of my retirement sort of looking at things and tracking them and occasionally sharing them with the board or with community choice advocates. And um, just today, I took a look at the greenhouse gas emissions intensity of the two IOUs in Southern California, Southern California Edison and San Diego Gas and Electric, and at the CCAs in Southern California. And I was really shocked to, to discover that with one exception, all of the Southern California CCAs emit more greenhouse gases per kilowatt hour or megawatt hour than the in investor owned utilities. And we also know that um, because of the ever increasing cost of clean green power on the open market, that many CCAs both in Northern and Southern California have found it difficult to continue to price under the investor-owned utility. So uh, uh, a movement that began with the promise of cleaner and cheaper power is in danger of moving to being more expensive and dirtier than the investor-owned utilities. When you combine this piece of bad news with the fact that the CPUC uh, is sort of subject to regulatory capture by those three IOUs, there's a tremendous amount of danger of CPUC decisions that disadvantage CCAs like Silicon Valley and advantage PG&E and the other IOUs. And so I think, uh, you know, perhaps Mel and Garish don't want to get you too nervous too quickly, but I do. I really think that the next few months uh, as the PUC decides what to do about NEM 3.0 and other decisions could be a very, very harrowing time for CCAs. And SVCE is by many, many measures, the best CCA in California. And so I don't want you to be going down with the ship if an iceberg rips open a hole in some of the Southern California CCAs and, and takes the whole concept of CCA down to the bottom of the sea. 
So please pay as much attention as you possibly can to these regulatory and legislative issues that Mel is laying out and Garish is talking to you about, because I think there are very serious risks in 2022 that are worse than you have ever seen before. Thank you, Mr. Carney. A dose of uh, New Year reality. Thank you very much. And with that, um, if there are no other members of the public wishing to speak, uh, we will return back to Mel to um, complete your presentation, please. Yes, the final slide is, uh, yes, the ad hoc committee, and this one is short. So basically the purpose of the ad hoc committee is to respond to the industry transitions that I've been talking about in terms of the dynamism of the market right now. And it's also an, an opportunity to increase engagement between the board and SBCE staff on legislative issues. And just to give you a sense of our activities last year, we had three meetings we worked with the ad hoc committee on various legislative issues. We also raised federal issues and we also raised other policy issues that came up. And it was a great opportunity for um, the policy team to get feedback from the board. And uh, this year we have uh, uh, the six focus areas. Um, and the first one is expansion of direct access. There's reliability reliability planning and procurement, transparency and accountability in rate making, public safety power shutoffs and wildfire prevention and cost recovery, affordability and equity, and decarbonization. And one thing I'll note is you'll see they're very similar to what the priorities of the policy platform, but they are basically the scope of what will be discussed with the ad hoc committee. And in terms of what's changed, uh, we changed steel switching and electrification to decarbonization. And the, the point of that was because we're doubling down on decarb, I, we do believe that decarbonization covers a broad range of um, issues and activities, including fuel switching and electrification. And we wanted to make note that decarbonization is a key priority for this year. And that's it. That's, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Mel. Are there any questions um, of Mel? Seeing none, we will uh, open the public hearing. Oh, Director Rennie, I saw the hand go up quickly. Uh, no question, I'm just gonna make a comment. I'll wait till after public hearing. Thank you. Um, and with that, we will go to the public. I see no raised hands with the public. And do we have any comments coming in prior? Uh, we do not, but it looks like we do have a member of the public. Oh, there comes the hand again. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, uh, um, I was just I was pleased to see the, the emphasis on decarbonization. I just want to point out to the CEO that I think you need to take a closer look at uh, like the NEM3 policy. We don't have to support subsidies, but we should not be punitive to people who are taking efforts um, uh, at reducing um, carbon emissions. I think that is, I am, that's the part that, that is, I think, being missed. And a lot of people are, are using the point of equity as a way to sort of mask that. And, um, and if we have, a, uh, and it appears there is a, a, a policy advising uh, group, we should, you should be looking at it more closely. I think, uh, uh, I think, Bruce said it well, I think the CPUC has been uh, captured by the IOUs and we need to be paying attention. That's Thank it. you for your comment and feedback. And with that, we will return to the board for discussion and Director Rennie. Thank you, um, Chair Gibbons. I, I was just gonna comment that, um, you know, I read, uh, I obviously been here for a long time and lots of committees and so forth. And I read through, you know, the list and I was trying to think if we forgotten anything, we've forgotten anything. And I, it really feels very thorough and it feels like it's going to be a lot of work for the, the ad hoc committee also to track all of these things. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with, with our list. I wouldn't take things off of it. And Mr. Carney maybe scares me a little bit because since the beginning, we've been talking about the worry that you know 
that the elephant IOUs were going to squash us through their control of the regulatory process and the legislative process. Um, so it's something that from the very beginning, we were watching very closely, you know, what's happening at the regu regulatory and legislative. Um, and then, you know, we, you know, I remember Rod Sinks, for example, was always, we need to be proactive on the legislative side to, to help make sure, you know, the regulatory side doesn't doesn't kill us. Um, and, you know, I think it's, this committee is also important, you know, because there's there's efforts that are aligned with ours to try to decarbonize 24 seven, for example. Um, but, you know, senators or assemblymen that inter introduce bills don't may not completely understand our business. And so um, we've we've seen bills that were extremely well meaning, but we needed to make sure they were tweaked a little bit to make sure we didn't get squashed, but could, um, you know, make make sure that, you know, essentially aligned goals with us do go forward. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable this is a, a good list. I'm definitely in favor of this ad hoc committee. If you'd like, I'll make a motion to um, accept our, our strategic priority plan and our ad hoc committee and express interest in being on it. Um, thank you, Director Rennie. Um, we'll go to Director um, Willie and followed by Director Gregor. Yeah, uh, mine is uh, pertaining to the uh, uh, member of the public that commented. You know, I, I don't think I really grasp uh, the essence of the concern there. And so I, I'd be suggesting that if he was able to uh, put together, you know, kind of some brief uh, excerpts of the NIMS three and his concerns so that we'd be able to better understand, you know, what maybe needs to be looked at in more detail, because I really don't want his comments to just have been a, uh, 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 just a brief uh, um, thing of our meeting, but something that we could then, you know, discuss more in the future if we have a better under standing. So whether or not he, he'd be uh, willing and able to, to do that, I'm just putting that out as an, uh, an offer and suggestion. Thank you, Director. And I think um, the board can ask that staff um, work with the um, speaker, Arnold, to make sure we understand and have, uh, have a response that can educate the board on what it is that the um, speaker's concerns specifically are versus what um, our CEO provided to the board earlier on. Um, yes, um, CEO Balachandran. Yeah, I believe that uh, yeah. during the meeting, an email has been sent by Mr. Arnold to uh, Melissa. So we uh, have that information and we will digest that later uh, after the meeting. And uh, so we have that. Uh, on a, another note, I just want to say to clarify, uh, Director Rennie, uh, today's uh, motion is only about the platform and the creation of the committee. Andrea will be sending an email out uh, asking for interest. So we do capture your early interest, but everyone will have a chance to uh, uh, express their interest after that invite gets sent out by Andrea. Thank you. Um, and with that, um, do we have any other comments or questions? I do have one, but does anyone else? Um, Mel, could you put up your last slide, please? I think Andrea has. Oh, Andrea, just... yeah. I, I do appreciate the organization um, and the listing of the information. Um, as I said, I think it's a good, I do think it's, a, as uh, Director Rennie said, has a good um, structure going forward. I, I would just suggest perhaps rewording um, the 2020 focus area. Uh, this is a minor point for future consideration. When you say expansion of direct access, it almost reads like we're supporting expansion of direct access. And I think what you're really asking us to do is um, it respond, be responsive to or um, analyze the potential expansion of direct access. So I think we, we, under, we understand better what it is our position and research needs to be. That's a great point, thank you. Okay. So um, other than that, um, 
If there is no further comment, this is an action item as was uh, just clarified um, by the CEO. It, we are approving the policy platform and identifying um, and confirming the focus areas for the 2022 Legislative and Regulatory Ad Hoc Committee. And then our uh, board uh, clerk will send out um, a solicitation for those who might be interested in being members of the Ad Hoc Committee, but we need to establish the Ad Hoc Committee first. Okay. okay. And with that, um, we had a motion, and I know we had a motion by Director Rennie, if I remember correctly, and then we had a second by, who did we have the second by? Was that Walia, Director Walia? We did not have a second yet. Oh. Who would, uh, Director Alahi? Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead and second that. Thank you, Director Alahi. All right, so we have a motion by Director Rennie, a second by Director Alahi, and may we have a roll call, please? Yes, thank you. Chair Gibbons? Aye. Vice Chair Tyson? Yes. Willie? Aye. Hilton? Aye. Feiger? Yes. Rennie? Aye. Chua? Aye. Ilahi? Aye. Martinez Beltran? Aye. Abe Koga? Aye. Walia? Aye. Klein? Aye. Aye. Thank you. That motion carries unanimously. Thank you all very much. Good discussion. And we now have an opportunity um, at our meeting to have one board member announcements and any direction on future agenda items. Is there any comment, feedback, questions, suggestions from the board? Um, I would offer that um, staff has begun the uh, REACH 2.0 out, out, outreach meetings to various cities. Um, and we began, um, I had one uh, with staff um, and my alternate um, in Campbell. I would encourage you um, to engage your alternates in those discussions if it's possible. Um, important for everybody to understand where we're going and educate everybody um, as much as possible so we can get support from our councils. So that was um, very helpful. And I'd also like to mention that on Friday, I don't know if anyone else has been um, contacted, but I have um, had several requests to attend a code read for humanity. It's what can municipalities do related to climate change. There's a fairly um, well qualified group of speakers, uh, a Dr. Paul Edwards, a Dr. Saul Griffith, um, Baranik, Baranik, uh, Bostanik, and then also, let's see, Dr. Luis Aguirre Torres, and then also Senator, State Senator Josh Becker. Um, and that is this coming Friday um, from 12 to 1.30. I can ask staff to send that out to people if you're interested in attending. Um, and I wanted to mention it not only because I think it might be interesting, uh, but you can also see who is co-sponsoring it, and um, that um, there was re um, redistricting, as we all know, and there were some significant changes for um, the West Valley cities and probably and perhaps South um, Valley cities in terms of who our representatives are. So, for example, um, in the West Valley, several of our cities no longer have or will not have Senator Cortese going forward. We will now have Senator Josh Becker. And then we also will no longer have Assembly Member Evan Lowe. We will have, um, who do we have? Assembly Member Berman. So um, lots of dynamics, not terribly drastic, but um, important to understand. Um, and we already have relationships with, with many of them. So that's great. And we look forward to expanding those relationships. And I think um, uh, Assemblymember Lowe is uh, planning to run for the new district, um, which also encompasses por portions of our county um, in um, next yeah in the fall in the fall fall 2022 election. So 
those are my quick comments and director Rennie. Um, I would just add that, all, you know, Los Gatos also got a, a change to Mark Stone's assembly district. So West Valley was is divided from just Evan Lowe really to three different assembly members now. Um, we also have um, Josh Becker and we got a new um, supervisor also we switched. So we got three three switches basically. We, we managed to keep our congressional <laughs> representative, but, but three out of four changed for Los Gatos and, and Montessorino. One thing I was trying to figure out is when is that representation effective? Is it effective soon or is it at the ne after the next election? You know, I have a thought and understanding, but I will not tell you I know I'm accurate and perhaps our, our um, attorney can clarify. I think it becomes effective in the November 2022 election. I think that's accurate and they have to be, yes, I'm getting two yeses. Okay, so yeah. So um, our representatives stay the same until they have their new boundaries um, elected in this, this coming fall. Um, and I think there might be some primaries in June uh, related to those as well. Okay. All right, yeah. uh, Director Klein, did you wanna say something? You're good, okay. Everybody okay? All right, well, I thank you all for the, um, honor and privilege of serving you this coming year, along with my compatriot, um, Vice Chair Tyson. And once again, a great thank you to past Chair Abi Koga. And thank you to staff for getting us off on our first meeting in January. And we look forward to um, a really exciting and positive 2022. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Uh